But, fuck all that. Because it's time for more Super Robot Wars 30! Okay, so I did some adjustments, like I said earlier, for some of the IBO tracks, and, um... We got some more extra DLC stuff to do today. So, now that we have those changed out, we're probably gonna do Robot Symposium and Angel's Second Advent. This one, considering the estimated strength, is probably gonna take a minute. Um... This one might not be too long, but we'll just have to see. We're gonna start with the Symposium first. Going to Omicron! Oh no! Too real. Stupendous Robot Symposium! Thank you for coming, Lieutenant Amro. Mom said it was great to have you. No, thank you for getting me this invitation. You can't exactly get tours to secret League military factories through official channels. Yeah, and the victory type follows in the footsteps of the Gundam legend that you created, Lieutenant Amuro. My mom and the others have been hoping to meet you in person for a while. A new Gundam legend. Yep. Was that what led to new technologies and groundbreaking new models like the V2? Sounds like you're having a ball, Amuro. That goes for you too, Koji. The development of the... In innovative new machines has to be just as fascinating from a researcher standpoint. I suppose. It's definitely sparked my spirit, that's for sure. Well, if anyone is really having a ball here, I guess it would be those two. Oh no. So, Keita we picked up at some point earlier when we were dealing with some of the Better Man stuff. And I can only... yeah, he's with Ernie. Did you see all that, Ernie? Oh, I did, Keita. A secret factory. The sounds of those words alone make my heart quiver. And within there lies the menacing mechanisms of the League Militaire. My inner nerd blood is boiling. You're going a little overboard, Kay. Even the League Militaire guys are kind of weirded out. <laughs> I like how her, her job for Kay is still to just be like, Disgusting. Ew. <laughs> quiver and a flutter and a, a slew of other things, right? Definitely some of his favorite words at this point. Aw, uh, I don't know. It's so nice to see someone getting just as hyped up as Ernie gets over ro robots? Robots. <laughs> Those two love for robots knows no bounds. A fandom that crosses dimensional boundaries. You could call that a miracle after a fashion. Looking at it another way, they're basically emblematic of the patchwork nature of the GKA. But why stop there, Keita? My blood boils every day, not just today. After all, I'm a part of the GKA now. Oh my god, I know, right? I can never really get over the fact that I'm right here fighting alongside Mazinger and Getter, my old idols. And I can't get over the fact that I'm fighting alongside Righteous Super Robot Army that only existed in my wildest fantasies before. You get it, Ernie. You really get it. God, I'm so lucky to have met someone who understands this fire in my heart. I feel just the same about you, Keita. It's a miracle that I'm tremendously grateful for. Hey, I got an idea. Let's do a review of the GK robots together. Oh god, they're gonna have a blog. <laughs> sure, we can talk the whole day away. First up, Mazinger Z. Featuring a sturdy body that earns the nickname Castle of Iron and a diverse array of ornaments. Therein lies the embodiment of the Mazinger Z's history. Mazinger Z got upgrades and new weapons over the course of its battles. Fascinating. And now it's had the fruits of all the latest photon powered research integrated as well, I take it. Precisely. That's Mazinger Z, the classic original and the latest and greatest. By the way, just had to correct a general misconception out there. Mazinger Z is actually very light compared to other robots. So this is something that somebody brought up in Twitter the other day. Because in this game, and because of the pilot, <laughs> not giving a shit, Mazinger tends to face tank a lot of its hits. A lot. Persist is its best friend. <laughs> it's maneuverable in its own right, but more to the point, 
Shogo King New Z <laughs> New Z is crazy durable. Which means it tends to get the role of taking enemy attacks to tank roll, as it were. Then there's the original Getter Robo, which has been around and active since Mazinger Z's day. These machine components combining into three different robot variants. The way they utilize each of them to fly for different situations puts it closer to a transformer than a combiner, wouldn't you say? You got a point. Air, land, sea. The way they adapt to every environment imaginable is what really makes it a multi-super robot. Super Ally Z is the correct translation. Yeah, they're a little bit spotty in places where they actually translate things. And for their latest model, Shingetter Dragon, it's possible to handle everything within a single form, right? Sure, but three hearts combining as one remains an immutable concept across all getters. Speaking of combiners, who could forget about Combatler V? It takes the field in five separate machines, each with their own combat roles, which we never get to see. <laughs> and when the enemy fields a big decisive battle weapon, they combine for a huge spike in power. Truly, it's a tactical super robot. Combatler V is especially popular with the kids, too. Because it's always active more recently? There's that, but the main thing is that it's a combination mechanism that was both simple and feasible by what most folks would call normal physics. Which means you can make it into a toy, and that toy sells like crazy. I mean, speaking of toys, or things that aren't toys but models. <laughs> is that toy still on the market? Can I get one? Absolutely. I'll call it the store I used to work at and hook you up. But speaking of popular with the kids, how about Triple G's Brave Bots? Once the truth behind Triple G's Exile goes public, the toys that were released back then will be re-released with a bang. The Brave Robots have, transfor have transformation and combination gimmicks, plus they're based around familiar pilots, giving them a friendlier vibe, yes? Yeah. And while it's partly meant to produce psychological effects with locals and civilians, they're essentially rescue machines, so they're built to work in residential areas that they need designs to match their tasks. Keita, I have a favor to ask. Say no more, friend. I'll hook you up with the Triple G Brave Bot toy reissues and the newest Brave Police toys. Thank you kindly. That just about covers the biggest names in the Super Robots in the GKA. Then it's out to Hangar 2. Oh my god. If I joke to you people, Voltron probably. <laughs> Poor Golion. And SRW Alpha 1 and Gaiden, the vehicles are separated. Yeah, that's what I was I was mentioning that before because I've seen it from like you guys playing them and from other like gameplay and stuff. They used to all be separate and I'm pretty sure a lot of the, the brave bots were too. And then they could either combine or they would just do combo attacks and shit. So there was a lot there were a lot more um situations and conditions for doing half of the attacks that they do now. There's no keeping up with that excitement. Amuro, I hear you. If they're going to hang her too, I should probably get over there. Amuro and Koji seem like they're just eating this up. I mean they're pretty much the chaperones at this point. Here we are in Hangar 2, which means. The small to mid-sized robots, the so-called real robot category. Real robot? That's a colloquialism for robots with concepts closer to real weapons. Basically shorthand for military machines. They're distinguished by ranging from 5 to 20 meters in size, because the focus for them is practical in real-world operation. Right, but like, everything on board here is real. Though what's real for us is the product of the fiction of the other world you're from. So wouldn't that make it fantasy to you, Ernie? You know, you make a good point. Let's not dwell on it too much, though. Okay, then. Moving on. When discussing military robots, there's only one place to start. Gundams, right? The advent of mobile suits forever altered the way humanity fought wars. The robot weapons did exist before. They were one-off decisive battle weapons. Just having one was a tactical move, or sometimes arguably strategic. They're not called super robots for nothing. But then mobile suits came around a decade ago. They turned all wars into robots versus more robots. One masterpiece stood out in this period of transition. An epoch making gem of mobile suit history. The Gundam. For the record, when I say the Gundam, I'm referring to the RX-78 too. <laughs> 
I'm aware. The Gundam had a distinctive difference from the Zeon Zaku series. That difference is existence was closer to the nature of a super robot when you get down to brass tacks. So its existence was a tactical in nature. Some say that the Gundam's existence is what let the Earth Federation win the One Year War, so you could also call it a strategic asset. In addition to issues of position and transitional period meant the Gundam got a lot of special weapons you don't see other mobile suits using. In addition to its a plethora of weaponry, it's loaded with super robot-esque gimmicks like core block system and the extra modules. That's incredible in its own way. Truly, it's a real super robot. I mean, yeah, pretty much. Like, between that and then we get even more super robot-y with, like, extra combiner shit by the time we hit double Zeta and all the other ones that do that too, like the Bawu, like... The line was always constantly blurred for the sake of toys and shit. <laughs> That difference was protagonist plot armor. <laughs> that too. Many mobile suits named Gundam were developed afterwards, but the first Gundam's bloodline is still going strong. The Zeta Gundam is part of that, right? The concept of expanding on strategic, tactical, and field options en masse via transformation truly marks it as a brand new Gundam. Definitely. In fact, the MS development line known as Project Zeta led to the creation of a big number of high performance machines. But out of all the multi-purpose high fire firepower mobile suits that stand from the Zeta, the one that made the biggest impact has to be the new Gundam. I'm a little sad that we skipped over double Zeta for this, but you know. Definitely doesn't hit quite as hard in terms of popularity as the Zeta and then going to like the new and Char's counterattack. Stability by virtue of simplistic design and improved tracking and weapons via Psychemu. That's another all new Gundam, wouldn't you agree? For sure, and that's why the existence of Gundams past this point becomes intertwined with Psycho Frame, but... If we linger on that topic for too long, some scary EFF guys will probably come and take us away, so let's move on, shall we? If you want a fresh perspective, how about we talk Victory Types? They're referred to as the Gundams of a new era. No kidding. They've overturned the notion that Gundams are purely one-off machines. In my opinion, overturning commonly accepted norms is precisely what Gundams do. Dang, Ernie, you're insightful. Oh, not at all. I couldn't hold a candle to you, Keita. And while we're on the topic of Gundams, we can't leave out their pilots. Gundams and great pilots are a package deal. A huge part of what makes Gundams shine is their pilots. Yes, absolutely. I see that every day in the GKA. The Gundam nurtures its pilot, and the pilot pushes the Gundam to greater heights. It's the stuff of legends are made of. Then, to our next topic. And meanwhile, thank goodness, saved by the fucking alarm again. Keita, Ernie, we're under attack! Aw, oh, man, but I wanted to talk about more robots! Keita, I think there's only one thing to do here. Yeah, we'll take this conversation to the field. Jadal, who? Never heard of him. <laughs> oh, no! A single machine loaded up with far more money in the prototype tech than ever deserved. Range of the Gump? Yeah, pretty much. The Junior. Get you out there. There's Ernie. Where the hell did I put that motherfucker? Forget if he was actually... I don't think we had a fixed sortie for this. Zinger hasn't been out in a bit though. I'll do it like that. I'm trying to think. 
Where are you? There you are. Actually, yeah, let me check on the Zeta. It's like flush, that's probably. Let's go. Vanos is like, yeah, uh, here's what realistic mechs would actually look like. Yeah, pretty much. Like, if we could get that level of stability and, like, mobility out of a platform like that, that'd be some shit. It's the Coisters, as usual. But they're showing up here, I guess we're the target. Have you guys ever heard the term moss drawn to the flame? We shall raise you all with the fires burning in our hearts. Nice one, Ernie. You're more fired up than usual, huh, Ernesti? I certainly am. You're all in for a treat. Our blood is boiling today. Go on, guys. Show us your stuff. What the heck are you talking about? Sometimes their minds might as well be black boxes to the rest of us. How about we just intercept the enemies? All units, commence attack! Keita, Ernie, I expect the best from you two. Yeah, I want to hear your souls roaring. Come on, Ernie, let's rock! Right, let's give them voice to our burning passion. It's a little awkward that I couldn't find them in the actual, like, sortie list, but whatever. I'm not too worried about it. This mission actually puts us a little bit ahead of, like, stuff for Keita, too. Because we actually really haven't touched too much on, like, the other characters for Better Man. And the, like, main story stuff that we've done. Final rewatch Better Man and Triple G later in that order. <laughs> Fucking, I'm I'm happy that they have the uh, the intro song for Better Man in here too. Like that shit, it doesn't sound quite the same, but it's it's still really good. I remember watching that on um I think G4 back in the day. And they had their own anime segment. It was like between them, sci-fi, and and uh, tsunami and Adult Swim back then. I think we have Flash, yeah. There we go. G4 had the good times. Oh yeah. They definitely had some really good picks in there. That and Cinematech was really good. Sam Ready for Kill, Better Man, what anime, I forget the name of. <laughs> Mafia Basso, also. oh, Onizuka? Psyche Reload, Classics, yeah.
And the Mafia boss is a chick. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one I don't know then. Ah, that black lustrous armor. The Zingers are as dashing as they are gorgeous. For sure. We'll all fight together with you with justice and love and friendship. Her, her actual, um... I was about to say, her volume is usually a little bit lower on her voice, but her her attack, especially in E-mode, all the different blast noises just stack over each other. <laughs> like, oh god. Goku-sen, okay. Already in Majin power. Nice. The beauty of heavy metals will be spoken of in legend for decades. Look at that fine joint work. Truly, these machines are worthy of being called fighting works of art. <laughs> oh god. Mobile seats are so great for pure variety. Truly, this is the star of the battlefield. By the way, I can recite the name of every gun of an existence by heart. <laughs> oh god. Please no. <laughs> I would appreciate it if he did it on his own time at least. <laughs> You tell him to go through AOZ and he just gets like a twitch. <laughs> Musical will hear that in Betterman, yeah. The sight of Breeze fighting with all their with their all never fails to look noble and gallant. If Braids fight with you You know, bravery. It should be a fight with our love for robots. Funny thing is that the Gundam Mark III is designed by Katoki, the L guy in Mark II. It's also developed by him. Oh god. Now that you say that, and I think about the shield on the Mark III, fuck. <laughs> It's just the Mark II, but with like extra cannons and shit. And like a smaller head. Fuck! Ugh! <laughs> Can't unsee it now. <laughs> so I did Mark III all kind of colors. <laughs> of fucking course. I'm assuming for the Mark III though that El Gaim probably came first. Unless the MSV stuff is like really old for that era. There's things he there's things he can't unsee. About the same time, huh? Is that actually gonna help me? No. Fuck it. Bio. I can slap you. 
Eh, whatever. I think he's good anyway. That's why we put it on him in the first place. Just gotta believe. Give him the bonk! Oh! Get up out of here! Residential edge lord here. Boy, no that's still cool though. I can't deny that that's <laughs> that that's a pretty hype combo. Ooh, she's getting two hits in there. Let's go. Elgain came one year before Zeta. Right. The Huckbine, that mysterious dramatic figure, gives me goosebumps. Agreed. This ephemeral yet edgy look is something I can't get enough of. <laughs> they just threw edgy in there. <laughs> get him, Jenny. Yeah. Yeah. MSVZ. Oh, Zeta MSV was like a year later. Okay. Boosh! <laughs> The closest we'll have to any sort of wing representation <laughs> is the attacks on this thing. hit these two? Nah. Yes. They have to move. I mean, if they're gonna move, then they're probably gonna kill this thing, though. Let's get some headway on one of these guys, I guess. Does he ain't doing three characters in this game? I mean the, the actual suits and characters though, but yeah, you're right. You're right. Although I, it makes me wonder if either of those three make any like line references in their dialogue or whatever either. I don't think so, but that'd be kind of funny too. Oh my god! Get up out of here, you! What are you doing? Man. Boosh! 
Habibu. And here it is. Our flagship, our house, the ship that hushes even crying children. The dr what, what was that last part? The dry stronger. <laughs> The all-purpose combat mothership built in secrecy to defend the Earth. The very existence makes my temperature rise. The fuck you going- Exactly, like, huh? I guess if it casts a shadow over something and everyone just like... Fuck. Then maybe, but otherwise... <laughs> what does that mean? What are you talking about? <clears throat> She's crying children. <laughs> Shit is weird. I mean, it spares no one. I mean, if to be fair, yeah. If, if anything's in the way, then yes. <laughs> You know what's also a quote? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. W what? <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, that was good. Gunning sword is something else. We. Big sis, excellent. Jeez. Pew, 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 pew. Yo, that arm gatling, though. Like, I got you, boo. Her theme sounds like some shit that you would hear in fucking virtual on or some shit, like for a stage. Then again, so does her suit. So like if he got rid of like the wings and stuff and made it a bit blockier, like pretty much dead on. Although to be fair, Ontario Tangram had that one suit that was like a super edgy A super edgy death scythe kind of thing. It had like the claw feet and the wings and shit. So maybe it wouldn't be too off kilter. Yo, a Jahuti for Super Robot Wars would be some crazy shit. Virtual has been in SRW before. I feel like I heard that before, but how long ago was that? Or was it like a DD situation? Oh damn, she can just... <laughs> okay. K and Alpha 3, so it's 2005 and 09. Damn. Yeah, it's been a minute then. That's still cool that they got included though. I was like, what is reaching from here? Oh. <laughs> oh my. And he's gonna do it twice. Alright. 
OG characters comments on the fact that they have a huck vine in our world. Something that's exclusively native to theirs. That is a little weird, huh? Because they are not OG universe version. So non OG doesn't actually have the huck vine or anything. It's just the ones that they actually pilot. From the mainline game. Okay. It's kind of a shame though, because it would have been kind of cool to have them comment on it. But in order for them to have connections to other characters, it would make sense for them to be from um, non OG universe. SRX team is from Alpha Timeline. Yeah. Foosh. This is just all side filler. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Specifically, the Huck Vine is just um, OG, which kind of is interesting, and I wonder if they'll get into that later. Do the Quaesters or anything. See if they know anything about that weird discrepancy. Because it's a little odd in the first place that that would actually be here anyway. That being the case. And that in this universe, no one really batted an eye about it being like the first in its line or anything either. He's not doubling up. I need to get his, him a second attack hit. That's a little excessive, but he can still do it. OG timeline at that moment is only alpha 3 right now. On one hand, I want Battletech and SRW, but who the hell would even be man enough... A main enough character to get in, and what would they be using? Yeah. Like, that would be one hell of a regional crossover, but, like, that's kind of half the reason that Armored Core would have a hard time, too, because, like, the SRW team would have to do so much legwork to, like, characterize and actually give them more, like, image and shit <laughs> to flesh them out just beyond the mech designs. Not to mention they would have to decide on all that shit, too. Because there's a lot, especially for Battletech, there's a shit ton of lore that spans out for, like, what? Several decades? <laughs> In and of itself? It's pretty extensive in its own right. You are a tiny boss. Beat that ass. Get him. How are you? How's that? Out? You know what? I'm not going to question it. We're in space, but whatever. Magical, magical robots. Hiya. Yeah. Not only for that, but they would have the parent company come up with the shit for them. So it's pulling even more teeth. Yeah. Like if they if they put that on the parent company, they would have to show the initial interest. Like, like Battletech would have to be the ones to approach them and agree to that. And like if they did the extra legwork, then yeah, it would probably work out better, but it would take some time too. My nose is itchy. Best main character I can see or know of would be from 4 since they actually became a boss in 4A. We have White Glint to be a memory of a good man that was forced to be a monster to protect his own home. That's a, that's a good one then. 
Also, White Glint's a one hell of a design in and of itself. Puck Mine first showed up in SRW4. Okay. So I think we just got two more here. I don't know. Where did you come from? Hey, excuse you. Should have looked at the counter first, like, duh. In the foosh. Yeah, hit none. Just Camille shouting at people as he's murdering them the whole time. Main problem is that 4's MC literally never says anything. Our operator is like that voice from both games. Yeah. I mean, they could probably give him a fill-in voice. I forget if he has any voice lines in, in where he becomes an enemy, but like... He'd be the easiest out of any of the MCs, right? Because all the other MCs are us. And that's, that's kind of the problem. With them being unvoiced and all that. What would be really cool is that they just went above and beyond to personify a lot of the arena combatants and other people that we run into in those games. And just really give them a lot, just flush them out a lot more. It's from our operator in both games. Unfortunate. Having some of the operators and um, clients that we deal with from those games be um, support characters or characters within the missions would be really cool though. Because a lot of them do have voices too. Although for me, I've only ever heard them in the, uh, the English dubs for those. Now, there's an AC manga that did something akin to what they did with Sea Destroy. Yeah. Like, if you wanted an easier entry point, them making supplementary content like that would probably be the easiest way to do it. And I mean, at this point, especially with the anniversaries coming up, or how many anniversaries they've had since they've had an entry, that's the least they could fucking do. <laughs> at least do something with the IP, damn. Fuck. That's why I still vote for Nine Ball. Yeah, Nine Ball. If anyone would get a proper SOW for voice, it's a shame for the character art. It's a done deal. Yeah. Nine Ball would be a cool encounter, and to find a way to get them on your team, too. Cosina 9 on SRW is another Century Episode R. Hmm. Ooh, here we go. I like how they leave. <laughs> I like how they didn't have enough for the depictions of the, the ghost harem, so they're like, nah, we're just gonna make it quick. We'll just speed it up in the animation. My ghost harem's with me, boy. Let's go. Huh. I like how he does that little, like, pump, like, yush. <sighs> now nah, you're good. Arigato, minna. We did it. And we didn't lose our brain. 
Yo, great ace bonus? Hell yeah. EXC plus one on sortie. Max SP changes from 50% to 75% on sortie. Oh my god. <laughs> Barf on this dude. Yo, what's big thing? You see, Hussa, he can't. Yeah, but the, the silhouettes that come out when he actually charges still vaguely represent some of them, so... Which is kind of interesting. I would assume at that point it's probably just his memories of them. You can reach, though. Yeah, you guys can get it. Nigashida! Chojun shiborikome! Nega ryu shiko! Hasha! Bye. Oh man, it's over already? Now we're just underwhelmed. Um, look, a little motivation is fine and all, but... <laughs> I feel so very lost right now. Keita, Ernie, I'm so glad I was here for that. Yeah, I could really feel the love you guys have for the GKA robots. I was amazed. Robot fandom goes deep, huh? It was educational as well. Thank you for that. Thanks for listening to our talk, guys. But we've only scratched the surface. If you guys enjoyed that, how about we return to the ship and get into the real nitty-gritty stuff? Maybe I should sit in on that. Hmm. Are you sure, Addy? They really could be at this for hours. But if Ernie likes something, I want to like it too. All right then, Addy. I'll go with you then. Really? Thanks, Hinoki. There's something nice about seeing Kei so animated about something. Aww. Aquatic levels for the blue sub six. <laughs> oh god, it's like. <laughs> all of them are just like, man. I came to check up on you guys, and what do I find? You're all slumped over. Yeah, one guess why. There's just no keeping up with Keita and Ernie. It was fun listening to them at first, but now it's just, I'm just groggy. At first, have you guys been talking about robots ever since we returned to the ship? Yeah, I got no idea how many hours it's been. But they just wouldn't stop talking. And it wouldn't have been rude to walk out on them. The next thing we knew, we were just stuck here with our energy completely drained. What happened to Addy? Chi Hinoki nodded off like 10 minutes in. <laughs> They look so serene. They must be having nice dreams. But seriously, is Ernie still going? Is he ever going to stop? Well, there are two very specific individuals you can blame for it. Fascinating. That's another valid interpretation, isn't it? Oh no! <laughs> Amro, no! Yeah, the Gundam legend is a double-edged sword as far as the Earth Federation is concerned. After all, the Ayug and the Anti-Earth anti Federation group stole the Mark II from them and used the Zeta against them. And that's just one example of Gundams being used as symbols of rebellion. So if the people using Gundams turn against the Earth Federation, those people could potentially win the support of the masses, yes. I'm impressed, Lieutenant Amuro. You really are a pro among pros when it comes to Gundams. I would hope so. They've dominated a large portion of my life. You know, I was interested in your tactical discussion of Mazinger's Keita. 
Oh, I'd much rather hear insights about that straight from the horse's mouth, sir. Aw, oh, man, I'm barely older than you are. You don't have to call me sir. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of doing any less for THE Koji Kabuto, the genius himself. Go on, sir. Let's hear your views about Mazinger tactics. So, back when I was younger, I definitely firm believed firmly on offense over defense. I think that led to a massive misconception that Mazinger never dodges. <laughs> They're still on it. They're still ragged on it. But the things but things are different now. I like to think I have a better head for the right tactics for different situations. You've grown, huh, Koji? Not just me. Mazinger has too. It's quite eye-opening to hear insights from you both, considering that you're also an engineer and a researcher. Listen up and listen good, Ernie. This is for your Ikaruga. Right, my Ikaruga will go down in legend ourselves someday. Have Amuro and Koji been keeping up this whole time? From what I can tell, they're just as pumped up. And because of that, the rest of us are left marching to our deaths with no goal in sight. But surely they gotta be wrapping up, right? Right? <laughs> I think that's a good stopping point for this discussion. No objections here. Well, that covers our review of each robot's basic functions. Next, we can delve into their tactical developments, or elements. Just what I've been waiting for. I got some hard data on that topic I'd le love to share with you guys. I'd love to see it. They're starting on a round two now? Someone save me. I can't take this anymore. Stick around, everybody. We're getting to the fun part now. Yeah, Hernie's right. The huge variety of robots in the GKA makes it a miraculous team. So let's share those miracles together. I wish I was in Dreamland like Addy right now. <laughs> Let me out, says the entire GKA. Release me. Mecha Geek Spirit. <laughs> hey, we got a second attack for free. Hell yeah. Oh, god damn it. Super comic. <laughs> <laughs> I really needed some Van Dread fan service. One day. Let's see. Did we get anything else from that or is that just an extra one? That was pretty much just an extra one. We actually have the actual front missions on the first page now. <laughs> some how they've been thinning out actually. Uh, well, let's do this one then. This might take us a minute, depending. I'm also gonna have to upgrade at least a couple of those dudes. I'm gonna need some wah wah. Alright, we're done running maintenance on the florist and the Gusion rebake. Man, how many times do I gotta tell you? It's where you say go! My Gundam's called the Ryusei Go. All right, all right. We're done work running maintenance on your Ryusei Go. Move along now. Why do you call it the Ryusei Go anyway? I'm glad you asked. See, actually, nah, forget about it. Come on, Chino. We have to take care of the final checks. Yeah, I know. Thanks for your hard work, guys. I mean it. Everyone in Tekadown feels somewhat distant lately. Just as they were warming up to us, too. I think they changed after that conversation with the boss, Orga. We can't blame them, given their circumstances. Still, it's kind of sad. I don't know why you're smiling, then. <laughs> On another note, the maintenance crew's going to be very busy once we get to the Phoenix. Or once we get to Phoenix. I was like, what? <laughs> you mean us, not the mobile teams? Don't spread this around, but the reason we're heading to Phoenix is to investigate the weapon that seemingly came out of a DVD. Why send us? That sounds more like a job for the EFF. That's the fun part. You see, the thingy in question seems to originate from Tekadon's world. Oh no, are we gonna find a fucking mobile armor? And since we're at least sorta of knowledgeable about their technology, the brass decided to send us in first. Do we know anything about the pilot? That's a trick. Oh god, it seems to be unmanned. Well... That's so. Well, hopefully we can use it for a good cause. Well, you know the deal. Let's get ready to work. Finding an abandoned weapon right for the picking sure seems too good to be true. Just saying. 
Well, you're not fucking wrong about that. Yo, these fucking things are so cool that they're in this thing. Damn it, I want one. Put it in, put it in GBO2 already. Reporting, Area F-52 all clear. Looks like it's an incident-free day for once, so you just fucking jinxed it, stupid. This area used to be a DVD fest, but it seems like things have calmed down. I heard they found some weird weapon up ahead. Weird? As in it came out of a DVD? Who knows? Not like they'll tell us anything. Oh shit! The hell is that? There's no match in the database. Oh god, and it's got its babies. There's babies everywhere. Oh god! So many bugs! There's so many of them! Are they protecting that bird-like machine? Aw, oh, hell no. <laughs> Contact HQ! Hurry! W watch out! It's moving! Oh man, if they put the Anksha in the GBO2, right? Fuck! <laughs> As always, overwhelming power is required to change the world. While there is no denying that statement, you should understand that such power is just one possible means of achieving that. What other means would there be? There is no doubt that overwhelming power would be capable of bringing about a revolution. However, any reform attained that way would only be fleeting in nature. It's by reaching the hearts of the people, by letting them gather under your banner, that the world can truly be changed. Of course, that's my preferred method. Who's to say if it's more right or wrong than any other? I see. This has been an enlightening conversation. Thank you. Is it a revolution you seek? Indeed, I wish to change my world. Is your Gundam, this Bale, the power you obtained to that end? Yes. Are you saying that a single mobile suit is capable of overthrowing your world's existing establishment? Bale is certainly a powerful machine, but I'm not so foolish as to believe that a single unit can defeat all my enemies. I mean, tell that to your show self or any other version of you. At least this one's not so stupid. Bale's purpose is to unite the hearts of the people. After all, the soul of a hero dwells within. A hero? The soul of the man who originally piloted Bale during the war long past. He is said to have created the foundation of our society through his achievements against the enemies of mankind. Bale is proof that I have inherited his will. I will use this symbol to gather the people under my banner to change the world. And then they looked at that and were like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Orga, according to McGillis, you two are collaborating towards a common goal. I'm only working with him. Honestly, I don't even understand what it is he's trying to do. It's just that if the world doesn't change, we'll never find a place to call our own, no matter how high we climb. If I may pose a question then, would you call the position where you are right now nothing more than a waypoint? Where are we right- where we are right now? I'm not talking about being displaced, to be clear. From what I understand, Segadon started as a small organization that have gradually gained strength and people. Through sheer willpower, you have proven that those like you, born to be oppressed and exploited, could find a way to live. If that is not enough, then what precisely is it that you're looking for? I want to find a place where we can all smile together. I see. All Dry Sarkin members, a group of unidentified machines has been sighted in the vicinity of Phoenix. The local EFF garrison is currently engaging these unknowns, but they're being overwhelmed. All GKA units are to split up and provide support to multiple locations. Mobile teens prepare to scramble. Unknowns. If they have any connection to the weapon we were supposed to investigate, this could be a good opportunity. McGillis got that advice ever, right? Oh my god. The things that could have happened. I mean, shit, the things that are going to happen in their universe now once they go back. Like, <laughs> what's wrong, Mikazuki? Barbatos is telling me something. What? I remember this feeling. Yeah, because this thing should be fucking gone. Like, we already have its tail. Not that it was the only one, but, you know. Angel's Second Advent. The, the point was that it was supposed to be rare at that point. It was the asshole that brought up another one. 
Gus banked on the sheer awe of him managing to inherit the use of Bale to draw. Yeah. Motherfucker waved around the Master Sword and was just like, Fear me! And they're like, eh, I don't think so. <laughs> Sure, it's that thing again? But Mika says it is, then it is. How's that possible? Mikazuki completely destroyed it. I don't care if it's the same one, another one, or one from a parallel world. That thing was made to kill people. We can't let it run around unchecked. He's right. There's a town nearby. Its people are in danger. Besides, this calamity came from our world. We should be the ones to deal with it. Okay, I get that. But how come we had to be the bait? The GKA forces are currently dispersed. Furthermore, that mobile armor is equipped with a powerful beam weapon. The anti-beam properties of our nanolaminate armor make us the best choice for this task. Is that right? Here, I figured you just wanted to flex with Bale. I won't deny it, that's part of it. What the hell? Are we just the side characters of your goddamn play? Don't worry. This time, I have Bale. Mobile! <laughs> Unlike... Agnika Kairu once did. I will finish off that mobile armor with my sword. They're coming. There's a bunch of bugs! War crimes are normal in GBO2. I mean, pretty much. A frame for the demons, yeah. What's that? War crimes are a great way to win and only count as crimes that their general public find out. <laughs> God, I mean, you're not wrong, but fuck. That's messed up. Sure enough, it sent its toy soldiers ahead. All units, what's your status? I've heard that Alaya Vishnata can only provide limited information when facing a mobile armor. I think we're fine on that end for now. Yeah, we'll hit it, this thing full force. Don't push yourself, Mika. You hear me? Yes, this time I'll do as you say. Are you ready? This must not... This may not be our world, but we still have a duty to fulfill. Gotcha. Let's see what that bale of yours can do. You won't be disappointed. As the inheritor of Agnica's soul, today I shall recreate the legend. The Pulamas will attack in great numbers. Use spirit commands like focus and wall to survive the enemy face. Get these fucking Pulamas out of my face. Got a range of they. Ooh. Railgun, one to four. Just 
see this. They're moving. Man, his walls are really expensive. <laughs> Got the risking on a couple of these. So let's test the. Bonds born to defend a king. What senseless deaths these are. But now, I have the power to change the world that allowed this to happen at all. Persist is a lot more preferred at this point. Out of my way. I'm kind of hoping that he gets like another like super attack or something in this. We didn't get much use out of the pluma, did we? Mainly it was just used to get the armor as quick as we could. Yeah, pretty much. It was kind of funny to see it take out stuff though. And the fact that they had to essentially retrofit this thing with a cockpit to make it a workable, like, like, suitor craft for people to pilot was pretty funny in, in and of itself. Definitely gonna have to have him back up after this. support defend. Well, they're still gonna go down. He just needs a little bit more eyeballage. Move it, maggots. I ain't wasting ammo on you. Then again, it's not like they'd listen to me anyway. Don't think you can win just because you outnumber us. Let's get rid of the bug so we can deal with that monster. Oh, 
Bonk. He can still persist though. That being the case, we'll probably just have to bust out bonds at some point. Bonds of faith. Hey. Getting more hype. That's the unfortunate one to pick on. Not that he can't necessarily fight back, but like, fuck. I got the crit on that though. Nice. Barry defense is pretty solid on him. Got to bonk so many people. Oh. 
<laughs> Not quite. And the one straggler in the back. Okay. I was like, even if they defend, that's not gonna be enough. The bigger issue is him taking that hit, though. be enough? Yeah, that should be enough. <clears throat> pew pew! <laughs> I like how just like standard that is just like, nope, pep pep. That's all it takes. Get out of here. <clears throat> You'll have to send a lot more than that if you want to take us down. Yeah, that's probably its plan. Oh, speaking of which, look at this motherfucker. There's the big guy. We have to take down that mobile armor to stop the smaller machines. Come on. Hmm. What's wrong, Mika? This one's stronger than the one we fought last time. I'm not sure how, but I can tell. What? No friggin' way. There's nothing to fear. This time we have Bale on our side. Our target is the mobile armor. Focus your attacks on it. Keep it up, McGillis. If you don't pull your weight, it's going to force Mika's hand. If he uses that power again, this time he really will be. Yet, yeah, he's not going to be able to get out of that suit. Or at least be even worse off than he is already. That's actually not enough. Damn. Oh, because it is support defend. Fuck. This power of friendship bullshit. Hey, ace bonus. That's welcome. Using the spirit excel. Also activates snipe. Hmm. Spear Valor becomes Soul. Just trying to thin out these numbers here. More so than anything else right now. Alright, well, let's see what happens.
No. E. Oh, that's just a shoot down. Hell yeah. Ugh. Okay, these guys are starting to hit for a little bit more than I like. Definitely overkill, but still pretty cool. <laughs> still like one more out of this group that can probably reach us right now. Unless that thing sails all the way across the map. Oh, lots of Floras, really. Yeah, lost. Rude. Oh shit. It moved twice. I knew it. It's stronger than before. Ow. Ah. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, shit. That's got nothing to do with beams. Jesus. we're gonna have to do here. Really? Well then. Oh, that's why, because it is support defend. There's like two of them on either side. Can I move and do? Yeah. Yeah, they're they're covering each other too much. Shit. Yeah, that solves the problem for one of them. damage to range weapons, 75% of damage instead of 50 damage when using support attacks. Thank you. 
Oh my god. Yeah, fuck it. You can get crunched. That's probably a mistake. Oh well. I wonder if it'll be able to shine spark one of those mobile suit armors. Hmm. No idea. This motherfucker is chonky. by defeating this mobile armor will I earn the right to call myself the heir of Agnika. I will do it! Even in a parallel universe, I am the man who has the power to change the world! Yeah, I mean, I know all that, because we also play cross race, so... The bigger thing is actually just going to be surviving this. I probably should have spread them out more. Or at least kept them in there for support attacks. Wasn't a song on the barb from Thunderbolt? No, that's another IBO song. Orphan's, um, Orphan Sears, or the one that he has is from, uh, their outro. Alright, see you later, Napalm. Have a good night. So yeah, both of those are IBO songs. Goddamn monster's trying to force his way through. No, it's going for. It's like, where the fuck is it? Orga. The prime directive of the mobile armors is to kill all of humanity. Is that why it's prioritizing him as a target? Oh shit. Damn it, its soldiers are blocking us. Mm. It's like, I don't give a fuck. Mika, I'm gonna do it, Orga. Wait, you don't mean I'm gonna take these annoying chains off Barbatos. Is he going to turn off the Alliance Vision on his limiter? 
No, if you do that, you're gonna... If I don't do it, I won't be able to stop it. It's going to kill you. But you can't! The light that I have now was given to me by you, Orga. What that means is, I have to give everything I have for you. Oh shit. Limiter off. Alright, see that Barbatos? Your prey is right in front of us. I'm gonna take these chains off you, okay? Just like that other time, so show me everything you've got! Yo, are we gonna get a new move? Let's go! Go eat him! <laughs> In one go. Yeah, the the most that I know about it is because I also played it in um, Cross Rays. They had that whole um, scenario, but I actually never watched through it, the show itself. Mika, it's still alive. Oh shit! Oh shit! It regen. Did it get rid of the fucking the babies? The small ones are repairing the big one. Oh my god! <laughs> and the mobile armor can keep reducing as many plumas as it needs. So basically, we have to bust it up completely or this battle will never end. But Mika can't take much more of this. Which is why we're here, yay! Down in there. Actually, SRX is a little flexible in that regard. Yeah, and I mean, we also know that because he's got the tail and everything already. Like, this is already the Lupus Rex. So. We made it. We will now assist and engage in that mobile armor. Please. Hmm? Huh? Please. You have to save Mika. We're gonna do that. We were gonna do that anyway. That's exactly why we're here. It's amazing how long you're able to last on your own. We were just... Just doing your duty. Feeling responsible for something that came to your world is understandable. But now, we are comrades. Your battles are our battles. Comrades. Leave the rest to us, Mikazuki Agus. Not happening. How much longer can you fight then? Two minutes, tops. As he says, you must take down that mobile armor within two minutes. Please, we need your help. You'll have it. We'll give it everything we have. Our target is that mobile armor. Concentrate all attacks on it. All hands, target the mobile armor. You must end this within two turns. I mean, minutes. Don't you die on me, Mika. If you don't want me to die, then I won't. Meanwhile, we still gotta get deal with these guys getting dunked on. <laughs> I was gonna say, that's not gonna do a whole lot. You can just slap it back. Doop.
Alrighty. I think you really want him since he's like split off. Getting a lot of work in there, though. Fuck <laughs> the ship, huh? I don't even really need an intuition for that. Just how many there are. There we go. Oh wow. Okay, so he's just at a point with that mode where he's just not gonna get nailed by these now. That's a sub. This is gonna be double for me. Oh god, yeah. The, the initial phase in Expert, let alone Super Expert or whatever the other mode is, um, this, this is gonna suck. <laughs> it's not gonna be great. Good luck for sure when you get to it. Is this all you've got, Barbatos? Come on, give me more. Do you, you want to kill it, don't you? And don't hold back anything. I got two hits. Heck. Stop. <clears throat> Barbara's just to reach its limit and must be taken down. The mobile armor in one minute. That means because always Mikazuki's going to reach his Mika is fine. One minute's more than enough. That wasn't all and it wasn't. I fucked up. Still. Hmm. 
Whoa. Yeah, what you're gonna do here. Whatever damage you can get here.
Time to give him the old amigo. Amigo! Amigo! Fuck yeah. It's getting there.
trying to get as much out of here as possible because like <laughs> it sucks that our first turn was essentially just us dealing with the attack phase and that fucking counted like ugh. Spin out some of these guys anyway. That out of here. Kazuki Agus, you show me the power that once brought the Calamity War to its end. His resolve and determination will be fine assets to me. Oh shit, you know what? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> As I say, you should probably get it again. Get it. Oh, this one has the regular version because it's fucking. Uh, they put the default one. Damn. Had to change that later. Real talk, though, that's probably the most we've had to stack spirits for stuff like this so far. Yes, we completely crushed it. There they go. The plumas are down as well. You okay, Mika? Looks like we did it before Vibratos and I reached our limit. The mobile armors from Tekadon's world are fearsome machines. What if another one of them shows up? It'll be fine, Reynolds. As long as Tekadon and GKA fight together, nothing's big enough or bad enough to scare us. Am I right, Orga? Right. Eh, that's good to know. Good work, everyone. Retrieve Barbatos and Mikazuki on the double. I can move on my own. No need to act tough, kid. Yeah, you've done plenty already today. Relax a little. Orga. Go ahead and let our comrades haul you in. Mikazuki August, you are ready to give up everything for your goal. You, all of you, are the embodiment of Agnika's will. Mikazuki, 
Why do you always have to be so reckless? I'm fine. It's not as bad as last time. So you didn't actually release Barbatos's full power. It was a close call, though. Two minutes really is the limit for doing that. Any more than that, and your brain will turn into an overcooked steak, so... Two minutes. I'll keep that in mind. Look, Orga, you gotta rein him in. He ain't gonna listen to us. What's wrong? You're quieter than usual. Why? Why did you help us? What do you mean, why? We're comrades in arms. Why wouldn't we help? But we're outsiders. Strangers from another world. Maybe so, but you've still been fighting to protect this world. We share the same roof, eat the same food. Who cares where you came from? You made a heartfelt cry for help when you asked us to save Mikazuki. We felt it in our own hearts, I think. Ain't nobody here who would ignore that. I think we're actually the first time we've heard you speak from your heart. I... I'm sure this sounds like the ramblings of a privilege to you. But I want you to understand. They meant every word of it. Heh, <laughs> I can see that. Hey, what do you know? You actually can smile. And that's okay. It's okay to be honest about what you think or feel. That's what it means to be alive. Yeah, you're right. I guess I forgot about that while keeping my tough guy act up. That powerful sense of responsibility is one of your finest virtues. At the risk of sounding trite, no man is an island. We all need comrades willing to share our burdens and joys. There's a lot I don't get about what you, you're saying. But I want to learn about it. Here in this world. Here in the GKA. I have a feeling that it'll help us reach the place we've been reaching for. Of course. All of us will remember our time together and cherish it. Once again, welcome aboard, Orga. Thanks. I think this calls for an actual welcome party. Good idea. We have to celebrate taking down that monster anyway. <laughs> no pouring cold water on us this time, Orga. I know, I know. Since this party's for us, it means you guys are paying, right? And <laughs> that's kind of stingy. Sorry, but we don't exactly have a budget these days. But for the first time in what feels like an eternity, I want to forget about our problems and let loose. Meeting the GKA it has been very significant for me, and now I can see it's just the same for Orga. But if the, if the Tekadon were to lose their pure sense of anger, that would be detrimental to my cause. Uh-oh. After all, it isn't justice or bonds that will change our world. The only thing that will is overwhelming power. Okay, so he, he didn't learn anything. Fuck. <laughs> oh, well. Second on flag. Yo. Actually, I should probably try to get that track in here, too. Let's see. We get anything else? No. But that one actually took a little bit just for us to try to discern how the hell we were gonna chunk all that health in that last turn. It worked out okay. We actually had a few other extra people to attack with too. Hmm. Man, they call seven we can check out. And then... I'm kind of curious about Deep Recon. Just to see how that's gonna turn out. So probably these two. I'll try to get enough upgrade stuff for these guys in this one. Although at, at this point, we may well actually have um, another uh, emergency sortie. We'll just have to see. We also got some ace chats going on. Congratulations, McGillis. I heard you made ace pilot. Thank you, GK. You didn't have to go through all the trouble of congratulating me. I know it's not much, but please, take this as a small token of my gratitude. I swear to God if it's chocolate. <laughs> yep, chocolate? Do you not like it? Oh no, I do. Thank you. I just didn't see this coming from, well, you is all. <laughs> I get that a lot. Do you have a little sister, McGillis? What makes you think that? I just get this feeling that you're used to dealing with younger girls. I suppose I am used to spending time with a lady much younger than me. Oh boy. <laughs> is he? So you do have a little sister. Actually, she's my fiancé. Uh, oh, I see. 
Then for her sake, you have to return to your world as soon as possible. That's what I intend to do. Though perhaps things would be better for her if I were never to return. But I can't stay here. I must go back to my world in order to change it. Even if it makes someone cry. Doll. Awkward. And she know. <laughs> Maniac. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Congratulations, Chino. I heard Gia made an ace pilot. Hey, thanks, GK. Now, this could just be my imagination, but are you keeping your distance? By a lot? Orga said I should do that when talking to you. Oh, you don't need to worry about me. I really like women with all the right curves in all the right places. Real women with curves. I see. <laughs> uh, ah, don't worry about it. By the looks of it. Give it maybe five years and you're going to be a bombshell heartbreaker. Once that happens, we can talk about this again. So you're going to stay in our world for the next five years, Shino? Done to think of it? Nah, probably not. <laughs> I gotta be there for Tekadon. The guys can't do anything without me and Orga, you know? He sure runs his mouth a lot, but it's clear that he cares deeply for his comrades. Hang in there, Shino. I'll do everything I can to make sure you can go back to your world. Trying to, he's trying to get in there, man. <laughs> I mean, he was chatting up the entire Shrike team last time, so it's it's not too surprising. Captain, I'm happy to report that as of today, we completed 100 missions. A hey. 100 battles, 100 memories. Indeed. Thank you all for your hard work. Thank you for all your hard work, EXO. Without your efforts, the GKA wouldn't have endured up until now. I appreciate it, Captain. But I need to clarify something. This just symbolizes the hard work of everyone on the ship. And the hard work of the Captain who unites them. Uh oh. Whoops, looks like I'm interrupting again, XO. Ch Chief Mavy? Sorry about all this, but I'm here to report that Drysark has produced some new power parts for us. All in commemoration of our 100th victory, I suspect. Thank you, Mavy. The battles to come promise to be the fiercest yet. We'll all need to work together to see them through. Of course, I'll do everything in my power to ensure we remain victorious. Loving the loyalty there, XO. Something I'd appreciate seeing more of back in the lab. Oh boy. <laughs> Speaking of trying to get in there. Maybe don't send Shino back to his world. It'll have the same effect. <laughs> well, I don't know. He's, he's definitely... His circumstances by the end of the show are definitely unfortunate. <laughs> God, that scene though. I actually saw a clip of that. Ah, man. Fuck. <laughs> Over 150 scenarios. Yep. Boy, we're, we're, I have a feeling we're going to be in this for a minute. This is officially episode 40 for everybody out there in the world. I'm sure you see it in the title. But, man. We're already on our way to potentially smashing through our part record, that cross race set of like 60 plus episodes. Holy shit. <laughs> mm. Uh oh. Uh, hey, Uso, it's kind of hard to eat with you staring holes at me like that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just hard to take my eyes away from the, uh, sight. If you really want to look at me that much, then let's share a meal. Huh? Don't mind, do you? Even I want to share a meal with someone from time to time. Well, if you don't mind me joining you. I do owe you a lot for saving my mother, Van. Are you saying that eating with me is as heavy as saving your mom? <laughs> ah, whatever. Let's dig in. Look at that shit. Look at all that shit on this table. Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Not gonna eat? Oh, no. It's just... Well... Van, have you always eaten like this? Like what? I don't know. I guess I've always used a knife and fork for my food. I can use chopsticks too, I guess. I just... No, not like that. But all the spices and sauces. You use so many of them. What? It bothers you. If I'm being honest... For a long time now, it's the only kind of meal that really makes me feel satisfied. 
Wendy and Carmen keep telling me I should stop, but... So this is the reason nobody seems to want to eat with me? Probably. <laughs> I mean, I kind of wondered if it wasn't... If that wasn't it, but, uh... Ah, well. Guess I'll be dining alone then. We could also just stop eating like that, but... This is how I live. I'm not changing it. You're a strong person, Van. Guess so. I have a lot to learn from how you fight, but maybe I have just as much to learn about how strong your will is. I've been fighting my way through whatever flows of my life takes me to, after all. That ain't true at all. Huh? You're fighting for Shakti, ain't you? Well, I guess. To save everyone in the League Militaire, so I can see my dad and my mom. To stop Zanscare. Also, sure, all of that there's too. Oh, that's there too, I guess. But tell me what it really comes down to. What it comes down to is going back to Casarelia with Shakti. And see, you're following exactly the path you want to. Life isn't taking you anywhere. You're no different from me. Thank you, Van. Do you mind if I share a meal with you again sometime? You're always welcome. I'm not going to change how I eat, though. That's fine. You can take your time with that. Man, for such a cute-faced little brat, he sure digs at some sore spots. <laughs> Give it all you got to yourself. If you lose what you care about, you'll never get it back. You're different than me. Don't go fighting for revenge. Keep your eyes on protecting what matters most to you. Ah, it's a good dude. Of course, all of that was internal, but, you know. It's the thought that counts. Puts a whole ass cupboard of spices he had. Ugh. <laughs> I, I don't mind putting a, a good load of spices on things, but even that. <laughs> Damn, dude. Fucking brutal. So yeah, we're gonna be wrapping up for today. Let's see what our outro is gonna be. Hey, Sakura Wars. Aww. That shit's been gone for years, yeah, pretty much. But that'll be all for Super Robot Thir Wars 30 for today. So until next time, I hope you guys have a good one. And I'll talk to you YouTube people later. Bye.